Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers. And today I wanted to have a little bit of fun. In Affinity Photo, you can do things with repeat. And repeat is kind of a little bit hidden. So I'll show you how to get to it. I was just playing around, so I can't guarantee that I can reproduce exactly these things. I can do the clock very easily, but let's have some fun and see what happens. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, let's uh, start with this circle one right up here. So let's hide everything else. Now, the way I created this circle, I went to Shape Tool and did an ellipse. And I held down the Shift to make a circle, just like that. Now, what I want to do with that circle is I want to get rid of the fill. So I want to say none. And then I want to have a two-point stroke. And we could do any color. But for now, I'll just do black. So here we have an ellipse, which is part of the shape tool. It doesn't have to be with the shape tool, but it's easier right now. So the way repeat works is if you do Control or Command J to duplicate a layer, then the very next thing you do will be recorded. And then anytime you do Control or Command J exactly after that, it repeats that. So let me show you how it works. I'm on that layer the ellipse layer and I'm going to do command J which I duplicated it so now I am going to take that circle and I'm going to move it say right there and then if I do command J again it's repeating exactly every single time I do command J it's repeating exactly what I'm doing. And if you keep going, Command-J, 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 and I just keep on going. And it's just like the old Spirograph game. It becomes very cool. And it depends on how thick you want it. And so now I could take that, and I could select all those layers of the ellipse, first one, Hold Shift, then the last one, and do Command or Control G, group them together. And then the fun part about it is you can now change the color if you want. You can go to Effects. You can do, uh, let's see, Color Overlay. Give it a different color. You can give it a gradient. And it's as simple as that. So that's one way to do it. Now I'm going to duplicate that and show you. I'm just going to keep this on the side. Hold on. All right. And then on this, I'm, I can get rid of this one now because we're done with that. And now this, you can also, remember, you can also stretch. You can warp it. You can do so many interesting things. So. That's a, just a fun way to create something like that. Another thing I discovered is if you take this, and I'm not 100% sure how Mira works in this program, but I've been playing around with it. I hope someone does a really good tutorial on it. But right here on the, on the toolbar on the left is the Mira function. And you could do all kinds of things with the Mira with that shape. But some of the crazy things are the output. This is the part that throws me off a little. So, and, and you can, which you, you can do very strange things. See how more show up? And I'm trying to understand how that works. So I just have been playing around and moving my mouse on top of it and trying different outputs and seeing what those outputs create. So if someone could really explain these or do a tutorial on this, I would love to see that happen. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but you can have fun with it either way. All right, so we're done with that. Let's get rid of that one now. Okay, let's try something different now, something that doesn't go in circles. So here I've created this pattern, and you can do a lot of different things with this pattern. 
and I'll show you how to create it. So again, I can go to shapes or any other thing you want, and I'm using, I think, the teardrop. And I create a teardrop just like so. And then, let's see, I think the stroke is a little bit too big. I'm going to narrow the stroke. There we go. And just like before, if I select the teardrop layer and do Control or Command J, and then I move it, I'll hold Shift while I move it, and I'll make them touch each other because I have snapping turned on. And now I continue doing Control or Command J. That gives me a line just like that. So now if I group those together, and then I duplicate that, so I'm going to do Control or Command J again, and then I'll say Arrange, uh, flip vertically, and then you could do all kinds of things if you want to do diamond shapes like that. But what I did was something like that. Let's see. I'm just I'm using my arrow keys to get it to about where I want it. And one more time, I will group that. I group that, and then I'm going to do a command J and then move it up maybe like let's see I'll move it up to I'll do a loop like that and then I'll do a command J again and it'll go by itself and there we go so now if I take that whole group I now have a pattern that I can use for all different kinds of things Let's show you how I did the clock. The clock is really interesting too. So to have the clock, to do a clock, you need to also have transform panel out. So if you don't see a transform panel here, uh, mine is right here, but you can go to view, studio, and oh, transform. That's where it is. Mine was not out, I'm, I was wrong. So let's keep the transform out right here. So now let's, once again, you could draw any ellipse, but I'm going to draw a perfect circle, right? And I think I will give it a bigger stroke, just something like that. And now for this circle, what we need to know is the exact center of that. So if you show the rotation center you just click up here on the toolbar it shows the center and I'm not sure if that'll disappear when I'm working on something else but just in case I'm gonna pull out some guidelines just to keep that center point so that's good now we go to the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle this time let's do a fill of black and this time we don't want and this time we don't want any outline, so this is all we need here. Now it's hard to get that in the center. We do want snapping on. So it's hard to get that into the center when you're far away, but if you get really close, then when you select it, you will see a middle point. And so that now gives you a chance to put it in the center. So remember when we turned on this center thing make sure it's on again it shows that you bring that right to the center of the clock when you have a clock you need to know that a circle is 360 degrees but we want to divide that by 12 because we want the 12 points on the clock well you could get a calculator out but affinity photo lets you put the math in here so the first thing we're going to do is a command or control J because we want to duplicate that rectangle so I'm doing that right now and that'll show right here now we want to go 360 degree is a circle and we want to divide that by 12 so instead of using a calculator affinity photo has calculations built in so I will type 360 divided by 12 and hit enter and it moves and now 
do not do anything else because that was, that was the last thing you did. So the, what you must do after that is just keep hitting Control or Command J to duplicate and just go until you get to the end of the clock. Just like that. Very simple, right? Now let's have some fun with it. Let's take the outside part of the clock and let's give it an effects and maybe, I don't remember what I did last time, a 3D effect or did I do emboss? Let me, let's try bevel and emboss. I like that better. So bevel and emboss and you could do a 3D right on top of that. So that kind of gives you a nice effect on the outside and then close. Uh, you should also have a circle in the center. So now you just create a circle and you just put it right here. Hold shift to make it a perfect circle. And then if you get really close, you can move it right to the center. Let me see. Oh, you got to go back to select, then move it to the center. There you go. And now we need hands on the clock. So let's go to arrows or somewhere in here. There we go. And first select nothing and then go to arrows. And we could start like that. Let's get closer. And in the, when you're doing the arrow up top, you can tell it you don't want one of the ends. So let's say none. And now we move the arrow up to move the arrow. I can't move it. Oh, because I didn't hit the select two. So once you hit the select two, you can move the arrow right to the center. And now that we move the arrow to the center, We want to know where the center point of the arrow is, which I don't see. Oh, here it is. So we got to do that again. We have to turn on the center point and this time move it to the end and then control or command J and move it wherever you want the time to be. And then you can also shrink it. So now let's take a look. And we can group that all together. And that's how we created a clock. We'll group that. We'll call it clock, which I already did underneath, as you can see. Uh, let's have another fun one. Let's try the triangle now. So we'll put the triangle out. Let's see how that one goes. So it's the same idea. All you do is we put a triangle. I don't know if you want it long, you want it wide, you do whatever you want with that. I like to show some lines on it and no fill right there. I think the line is too big. Let's go something like that. And remember I did we have to first duplicate the layer with the command or control J. Then we're going to move it somewhere, right? And you decide where. It doesn't really matter. And now from this point on, I'm just going to do con con control or command J. And uh, this one, see, it's very different than the first one because I put them closer together as opposed to distance. and keep on going and going and going i think that's fine and then we'll take the first triangle layer and then the last triangle layer we will group it and now let's have some fun with some effects we can do uh, let's see we can do any color we want we could do color overlay so you can change that any way you want just like that and you can do gradient overlay if you want. You could do different colors there. You can do, you can leave it black and then do outline in a different color if you want. 
And let's see, we can make it a, see. how's that? Something like that. I don't like that color. We wanted something brighter, like a yellow. We could do a red. So there's so many things you could do. It's amazing. This, this program, I cannot believe it's only $49. And anyone who doesn't buy this is crazy. I mean, it is such a value for what you're getting. Uh, Gaussian blur. There's so many effects. You want to try 3D? I don't know if it'll work. We, the best part about this is you should always play. Look at that with a 3D effect right there. That's pretty cool. But the more you play, the more you learn. I don't know half the stuff. I'm learning as I go along because I'm practicing. Here's a 3D and it has one light source. I can move that light around, but then I can also add another light to it and give it a different so it gives it a different effect and let's take a look let's get closer look at the differences in the effect I can remove that light I can move this light around to a different side again bevel and emboss uh, co color overlay uh, outer glow I can not only give it an outer glow maybe I want to color to the outer glow look at that Look at the, the effects and the intensity. You can bring it down. That's kind of cool, too. So if I add that and then I say color overlay and give it a, a different color, of course. Let's try a darker blue or maybe a reddish. I don't know. It's all playing. That's all it is. I don't like that, actually. So I'll leave it the way it was. I could have really gone and made the lines smaller. But since I didn't say, uh, I didn't tell it to change the lines as I expanded, the, I could make it bigger and make, and then the lines will show up much thinner. So, I don't know. Let me tell you, you tell me what you think and why don't you do some and post it on YouTube because I think it would be very cool in the comments just to see what you come up with. The, the, the possibilities are endless. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. My advice has always been Play around. Just because a tool says it's good for something doesn't mean you can't use it for something else. And that's how new ideas are formed. So please also help me be able to monetize my site. YouTube requires me to have a thousand subscribers. So I know some of you watch this and sometimes don't hit the subscribe button. And I've done that myself. But now I've learned that just not only for me, but for all the other people who are giving you free tutorials, please click subscribe. It really helps us a lot. Thank you and have a good day.